Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. It's so cliche to talk about physical transformations, but when you look at Joaquin, especially in some of those, you know, shirtless dancing scenes, he just told me that he wanted to gain weight for the role. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. How, how did this conversation go down? I think that was, he was looking for the easy way out at that point. He's like, <laughs> you know, I think he should be more like heavy. We haven't really seen a heavy Joker. And I said, ah, you know, I get it, but I really believe that Arthur needs to look hungry and wolf-like and, and malnourished and, uh, it was a bit of a conversation, and then he just started losing the weight. He lost, I think, 52 pounds. 52. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah. He just wanted a shotgun ice cream for, like, <laughs> yeah. whole months. Now, uh, there are so many iconic iterations of Joker, you know, from Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson, Mark Hamill even. How do you go into this saying, I'm g you kind of set all of that aside, so how do you make it your own while honoring what the source material really is? I think... For me and for Joaquin, by ignoring the other stuff, and mm -hmm. not in a disrespectful way, but in a way that if we looked at all that over and over, it would paralyze us with fear. Because there's been so many beautiful and great performances that we couldn't get wrapped up in it. We just decided to kind of put our heads down and just try and do our own thing. Now you've been quoted as saying, or maybe misquoted, that there was no oh. intention of doing a sequel but it does seem like there's a space for that. Is that something you're thinking about or you're interested in? No, we really like that this movie lives on its own. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Now there is a theory that, there's a lot of theories there going around are. and there, there are gonna be so many. I know. Do you submit to those? Do you read them? No. No. no, but tell me what this one well, is. Well, this I've heard one, the, the one that I think that caught my attention the most was that the Joker in this movie is not the real Joker. It's mm. the one that influences the Joker that we meet later. Mm. What did you think of that? You know, it's funny that that's a theory that's out there because I've, I've showed um, I've showed this movie to when we were editing. I would show it to friends of mine, filmmakers, writers, um, and one of them had that theory. And you know, we I like these theories. I, I, just, I, don't, I don't look into them because and I definitely want to answer them, but one day I will say what we think and mm -hmm. what we meant when we were writing it, um, um, which I think is important, but not now. I, I like that, um, again, you could view this movie in many different ways. Yeah, that kind of goes into my next thing. It's like you have this completely unreliable narrator and right. we're talking about, I mean, me and my friend that saw it, the only person I can really talk to it about right now, we're like, what did you think? Did you think this really happened? Do you, will right. you ever reveal what you were thinking? While yeah, we're... I will one day, but I think in the far future, it's fun to, to sort of go back in and, and because you don't want to hamper what other people's experiences, and certainly, you know, you don't want to hamper other theories that might arise from it. But I, 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 again, I think it's what makes the movie um, intriguing. Like I mentioned, I after watching this movie, I went and watched The King of Comedy because I feel like that's essential viewing, like intent mm -hmm. with this movie. Um, but Robert De Niro is in the movie. Can you talk about getting him on board and how well, that came we, about? Yeah, I mean. The, King of Comedy for me is one of my favorite movies when I was younger growing up and still to this day. It's a very overlooked early Martin Scorsese movie. Um, a lot of people haven't seen it like yourself before this. And uh, so it was a, a, a somewhat of an influence for this film, of course, and De Niro being the star of that movie. I, I basically sent the script to, to Bob when we came up with that character. And I thought, well, this would be interesting if we get Bob to do this. And uh, he read it and we met and we talked about it. And, and now he's in the movie, but it, you know the the correlation between the two movies is not that direct. It's just a no. little bit of a no. Of but a I head I, nod. I feel like I liked. I wish I almost wish I watched it first so that right. I could be like, oh, that was a nod oh, to it. That was a right. nod to you it. You watched it after. I watched it after. Oh, yeah, funny. I watched it last night. Um, now I want to talk about the reception for this film. There was an eight-minute standing ovation. I, I don't know who's timing the standing ovations. It was I'm, real. I've always wondered I was that. There. Like, <laughs> I was like, who's timing this? But eight-minute standing ovation. There's there's Oscar buzz. I mean. What, what would that mean to you? I know well, Joaquin I mean, is like, don't talk to me. Before. Yeah, I mean, it's not something I would want to talk about either. I mean, the eight minute stand ovation happened, it was real, and it's surreal to be there for it. I mean, you know, the more interesting thing for us was the movie won the Golden Lion, you know, at the Venice Film Festival, which is unheard of for a comic book film. Even Warner Brothers as a studio has never won a Golden Lion there. The history of that festival is, is, is runs deep, so for us, that was a major, major thing.